Welcome to another Build Day Live video here at NetApp in Boulder, Colorado. I'm Alistair Cook and I'm joined by a gentleman who inspired this Build Day Live event. Um, Mr. Adam Carter, what is it that you do with NetApp? Well, at NetApp I'm the chief architect for our HCI system. I oversee other uh, parts of the portfolio also, but I spend most of my time on the HCI system. And what that really means is I'm looking out at a, about uh, longer term futures, usually at least over 18 months, two years plus, five year, uh, at probably the max, because that's as far as I think any of us can really think these days. Um, but I, So I'm usually looking out over pretty long term futures, not so much the near term roadmap. So not, a, not about the features that we're going to see this year, but, but are going to start development probably next year. Yep, yeah, that's accurate. So you would have handed off the Kubernetes things a little while ago as an architecture and uh, been, been moving on because of course that's now a shipped product. Yes, that's, that's true. Some of the more recent things that shipped around uh, Kubernetes integration and some of the hybrid stuff we've been releasing, uh, I was involved with over a year ago in early stages and, and you're right, I'm less involved in, in, into that now. So what's occupying you at the moment as, as being the possible futures for NetApp HCI? Well, a lot of the things I'm looking at uh, right now, uh, you know, that that Kubernetes work was kind of a tip of the iceberg of really, which which I started after that looking into more and more of what we consider the hybrid multi-cloud. You know, really what what I see going on around HCI systems right now is where we used to be a bit more focused on kind of consolidating call it compute and storage and simplifying that. The world has really expanded into this complexity of customers trying to solve for the fact that they run in usually more than one type of uh, cloud. And I could say stack as accurately as I could say cloud. You know, whether it's a public or private thing, it's a, it's a full software infrastructure stack, say Kubernetes or VMware right. or Amazon. Right. Uh, some of those are considered clouds, some of those are considered stacks, but they're environments that customers are running in and they typically are juggling more than one of those in trying to, to make an HCI system consolidate those stacks and clouds into one manageable environment for customers has become kind of a new problem set that we're really looking at. So that's managing a truly multi-cloud environment where, where parts yeah. of your estate, maybe there's one application that for some reason needs to be on AWS as, as a platform or to right. enable the business uh, units who, who need to develop, deploy an application to choose the right place mm -hmm. without hamstringing them the operations team because they get far less visibility into the infrastructure on AWS than they do on premises. These right. are the kinds of things you're concerning? Yes, I exactly. When, when I look at, you know, th there's kind of this reality of customers, you know, let's say they had some applications that they wanted to run on premises uh, and they looked for kind of the simplest way to do that. They probably found themselves in an HCI system. That's great, right? But they also probably have other applications that the answer for the simplest way to deploy that new application or run that new application was Amazon or Azure or mm. Google, right? And then um, they still have probably uh, some real estate in maybe more uh, traditional, just you know, VMware servers and external SAN. And, and as you look down that path, what we've typically found is customers have at least three, usually way more environments. You know, mm -hmm. and that's just counting what they have in production. If you count what they have in development and in test environments, it, it gets really cumbersome. So while these might not be the sexiest things to talk about as far as features, those environments, how many of those you have, they might have been the simplest and best for that particular app. But if it's your job to oversee that entire real estate and manage all of that and maybe migrate between them or upgrade them or uh, monitor them, you know, things that could be very straightforward if you just had one of them, uh, those are not very straightforward when you have many of them at once. Right. You're, you're juggling many systems that independently might be simple, but together start to become complex again. And that again, each of them has unique levels of service that have been delivered, levels of yep. visibility. It's not the same problem as having, I've got 15 different vSphere clusters and I want to unify that management, because that gives you, a, you, you at least have a consistent set of data and, and operations coming out. When you start right. going multi-cloud, it's well, if I've got an analytics application that's running on top of GCP, then I've got a completely different set of instrumentation and points of control. Yeah. This is the, the nightmare you're trying to, to save ops from. Yeah, we, we're trying to help 
uh, people actually operate, do real oper uh, you know, their real operations around those sim simple things that, you know, it's simple for if you look at, say, one HCI system, like, oh yeah, that, that's very simple to do these things too. And it's like, that's great, but you're doing that for these 10 systems at once, and all of their simple ways are different and slightly different. And, you know, we're actually seeing, um, so, so a lot of this, we talk tech quite a bit, you know, we talk about how easy your API is, and is there one UI, and how hard is it to upgrade? I think it even gets to the business level. What's the business model that all of these were sold to you in? Some of these uh, companies only work as a per month per drink, right, mm. service. Uh, some of these are sold as, you know, three to five year systems. Um, you some, know, some of them are a perpetual software license you know, that's not coupled right. to the hardware replacement. And yeah, the, the, whole... the juggling of all of those real estate, even in, in how they're purchased and how they're deployed, gets more complex than people really want it to be and really need it to be. So doing even just the financial analysis of what's the mm -hmm. real cost over the lifespan of my application for the, the infrastructure I'm choosing yeah. is really a complex matter, let alone getting to the operational tasks following. Yeah, absolutely. So so when, when I've been looking out at kind of the long term of HCI, it's, you know, great that we've simplified um, for, for parts of it. I think there's a lot to be done to improve well, how, how does a uh, DevOps team, but both, both sides, which have kind of different views of that world, right? How do they understand their whole landscape mm -hmm. and everything they're doing in it? And what can we do to simplify the fact that they, they probably should be running in these multiple environments? I, I, mm -hmm. I don't think the answer is that you try to create one environment that somehow perfected everything, right? I don't, I don't think that's mm. easily done. Right to say, oh, my one stack has got everything you need, and you don't need anything well, else. If, if that there works, are multiple stacks, and they're everybody good at would things. use the same. If, if, or, that, right. if that was the answer, there wouldn't be yeah. differentiation in the market. There is Absolutely. unique value for unique business. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So, so if you want to do AI and Google, and you want to do something else in VMware on premises, uh, managing all that real estate and making that a sane proposition is something we're really interested in. Are there any of the fruits of this this planning and thinking of, that are starting to come out of NetApp yet, or is we still a little way away from seeing that as products that are available uh, to customers? A bit of both. The tip of the iceberg is starting to show. So, so when we first um, announced uh, NKS capabilities on premises and in each of the clouds, we also showed some of the capabilities that start to tie this together. Fabric Orchestrator is a good example. Um, Cloud Insights is a monitoring capability. So we're we're starting to show some of the initial key capabilities that that go towards this hybrid multi-cloud uh, set, but but there is a lot more that we can do and a lot more that we can enhance. Those are just a few services. Uh, you know, when I look at the NKS and, and cloud volumes uh, release, those were two of the most important ones to be able to get Kubernetes and persistent storage to go with that Kubernetes. That's a very powerful mm -hmm. thing that there is. Uh, it kind of a a long long road of of years of work to make the full like reality of making a hybrid multi cloud as simple as we possibly can. That's going to take a long time and a lot more services and a lot more capabilities to be added. Still, well, thank you, Adam, for sharing some uh, future thoughts and things to to have in mind as we're implementing our current infrastructure as well. And thank you for joining me at this Build Day Live video. Stay tuned for lots of great content here from NetApp in Boulder.